Oh, no, 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 no. I'm nervous. Oi. Oh. Ay. Hi, Covetor. It's Gigi Good, and we're in my home, and we're gonna play a little game. If you're not cringing, you're not growing. I'm nervous. Oh. <laughs> Listen, to me, this is not cringy at all. It's kind of sickening. Um, this was such a moment in time in my drag career, and honestly, my self-discovery as an artist in general. But I think I was probably a freshman or sophomore in high school at this point, and my English teacher at the time, Lisa Beard, who is a photographer, she found out that I was doing drag and wanted to know if I would take pictures with her. And one thing led to another, and we started an entire series called the Yellow Glove Series, where I would dress up like a 1950s, 40s housewife something, and I always wore yellow gloves, and we always broke into abandoned places to take photos. So this is an abandoned mental hospital. I think the cringiest aspect of the photo, to me, it's gotta be the fact that I, I was wearing heels that were two sizes too big, because that's what, I thought you were supposed to do as a drag queen was you would just go up two sizes in your heels because you were a man. And um, you can see I'm swimming in these shoes. Okay. Oi. Oi. The quality of this photo, first of all, is insane. Also, <laughs> lot, lots to unpack with this photo, really. This is when my MUA days started when I would just play in my room on the weekends, before school, after school, late at night, and I would just put on makeup, take it off, put it on, take it off, and I was just like learning. I taught myself how to do makeup prior to YouTube tutorials, but when the YouTube tutorials came in, it was when I started to really refine it. And the makeup doesn't look that bad here. The wig looks awful, but it was a fucking victory roll, which, Props to me for figuring that out on my own because I was not a hair girl. Also, look at the photo and look at the cleavage in the photo because I what I gagged myself when I was like able to push the tits together. This, re I remember doing this and thinking that was the cuntiest thing ever that I had cleavage. And now I have tits, so you're welcome, Diva. This is going to be, to me, this is going to be a 10 on the cringe scale because of the canvas Hobby Lobby motivational poster behind me that says something like, today is the day. Take it by the whatever and show them who's bought, I don't know, it's like one of those from fucking Hobby Lobby. That is cringy as fuck. But in terms of the drag, I would say, um, no, it's also a 10. This could never, this could never. Couldn't. Uh-oh. <laughs> Got an airdrop. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh my God, do you see the tights? It's the first place my, my brain went. Oh my God. This I think was the first time. Oh, it is kind of sweet to look at actually. This is the first time I was ever really in drag. And I remember this week at school, I, I was, at Creekside Middle School, I was in eighth grade, and my one of my friends decided they were gonna start doing drag under the name Cindy Vicious. So Cindy, if you're watching this, hey. She asked if I wanted to try it with her because she knew that I liked hair and makeup because I had been doing it in theater and playing with dolls and braiding hair. I had never heard of drag before in my entire life. Didn't know who RuPaul was, had never heard of the show. RuPaul's Drag Race was airing at the time. I just didn't know, but I thought it sounded like fun. And at the time I was just dying for Iggy Azalea for whatever reason. I feel like a lot of people were for some reason at that time though. And um, this is the, this is kind of the persona that I took on. And this was kind of also right around the time that American Horror Story season three was airing. And so that's kind of how I got the name Good was from Fiona Good, who was Jessica Lange's character in American Horror Story. And then Gigi came from my last name that had two G's in the spelling. This was the day Gigi Good was born. The cringiest aspect about the photo is I didn't, I didn't own any women's clothes. And this was at a stage in my life where I was, I was trying not to be trans, I think at the time. And obviously at the time I didn't know what any of those words meant. I didn't even know what trans was. 
but I had those feelings and I didn't own any women's clothes. So these shorts belonged to my friend Emma at the time. The shoes I think I got from a Savers. The shirt is just a t-shirt that I tucked into one of my mom's bras, which I still have sitting in a drawer in that room that you just saw. The cringiest aspect though has got to be the tights that for some reason, it's like a bike short length of control top, which why would they even make that in a tight? I don't know, that is cringy though. And I definitely performed in this outfit. What would I tell Gigi in this photo? First of all, if this Gigi just happened to walk around the block and up the steps of my front stoop while I was taking, while past Gigi was taking these photos, past Gigi would lose her shit because secretly she was thinking that this is exactly what she wanted to become and she just didn't know it yet. So I think it would have blown her mind, but I would have told her just keep doing what you're doing. You are, you, you are so lucky to have the family that you have and the friends that you have and you're lucky to be going to school that you're going to because there aren't a lot of bullies. You made friends with all the cheerleaders, so all their athlete boyfriends are not making fun of you. And um, I don't know, you're doing everything right. So you just buckle up, sister, because you, you got a big storm coming. On a scale of one to 10, one being the least, 10 being the most cringy to me, I think upon first glance, this would be a 10, but there's something about this picture that doesn't make me cringe because I, something woke up in me this day something turned on in me this day and I remember this day so clearly. So I feel like on a scale of one to 10, this is gonna have to be a one on the cringe scale, just emotionally, I think. But I'm sure we'll get to some tens. <sighs> oh, 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 oh my God. <laughs> lots, lots to figure out here. Okay, so. <laughs> This venue that I'm standing in right now is the first place that I ever performed Dragon. Not, not this picture. This picture was from a few times after the first. And this was at a substance-free venue that doubled as an indoor rock wall that me and all of these underage queens in my hometown would perform, including that Cindy Vicious who convinced me to do drag in the first place in middle school. This photo is important to me because I am wearing a dress. This is, I think, the first Thing my mom made me to wear in drag and it was inspired by a Christian Dior. It's actually very, it's kind of the white version of the black one that I wore on RuPaul's Drag Race. This is when I was really starting to build who Gigi Good was and not just from off the rack things and of course I was still very heavy into the 1940s, 50s vintage damsel, distressed, sad housewife situation. I performed Lies by Marina and the Diamonds in this, and I remember I had a bouquet of flowers, and I <laughs> thought I was being so cunt, and I turned around to like throw them into the audience, and they got stuck in the rafters, and I didn't even notice, but that everyone was laughing after that, and I was like, why is everyone laughing? I'm like really turning it right now. Um, cringe factor, the tights are about 10 shades too dark for me. You live and you learn, girl. Also a burgundy lip on your wedding day. Come on. Oh, I, I, this I think, oh my God, yuck. Okay, so this was in college, believe it or not. Looking at this photo now, I'm kind of can't believe how thick my facial hair was. Many sessions of laser later and lots and lots of hormones. I'm safe to say that that is not the case anymore. But this is when my hair game kind of started stepping up a little bit more and when I realized that hair was really becoming my love language. There's nothing crazy about this hair, but the, the kind of, you know, spackled spit curls on the face I don't know, I thought I was really turning it and I hadn't really seen a lot of people doing this at that point. Oh my God, I know when this was. This was when I got on Anastasia Beverly Hills PR list in college and you couldn't tell me nothing. I, it, I was the talk of the town at Millican University because I got two big boxes from Anastasia Beverly Hills and I didn't have to pay for it. So all the, I would go through it and pick what I wanted and then I'd have all my girlfriends come and take all the reject stuff that I didn't want. I was very popular then, I have to say. Ooh, the brows, that was a James Charles brow. Yes, it was. 
This is cringy to me. The facial hair is sending me through the roof. I think zero to 10, this would probably be, this is like a good, uh, I don't know, the more I investigate it, the eyeshadow is really good, actually. The gloss, thank God for wearing a gloss. The hair is great. Maybe a seven on the cringe scale. I think it is really important to look back at your, your past self and your past creations, especially if they're on the cringy side, because even if it does make you cringe, it really takes you back to where you were at that moment in time. And there was a lot of self-exploration and self-discovery that is often the reason those things are cringe because you're just learning and I was very much in all of these photos I was at a really pivotal learning stage in my creative process be that hair makeup fashion it's so nice to look back on and I know a lot of people in my position and in my type of identity would be really against looking back at photos like that because it could send them into a sort of tizzy about, um, you know, self-acceptance and, you know, kind of showing your old body. But I, I'm really proud of the transformation that I've had and I was never ashamed of who I was. I just didn't really have the words to say who I was. So looking back on that, that girl was always in there. Um, but yeah, I don't know, that really was, I'm so glad we did that. That made me really happy. Social media has changed a lot since taking all of these photos. Actually, every single one, it has changed pretty drastically between each of those photos. And um, it kind of very gradually went from passion projects into making money and getting on PR lists and it kind of becoming a realization of, oh, like this could be something that I could do. That whole PR list situation is when I first considered dropping out of college and moving to LA to become a makeup artist because I was like, oh, people are noticing me. I have 10,000 followers right now and Covetour, I'm so glad that we got to do this together. I love moments like this of self-reflection and it's, I don't know, it's nice to kind of feel a little embarrassed every once in a while, it's humbling, but um, yeah, just remember, if you're not cringing, you're not growing, and that is the name of the game. Adios. Take my mic with me.